Hello everyone, I'm Robin and currently I'm working on what is arguably the hardest part of distilling, taking distillation cuts and blending distillation cuts. This is what makes up the final spirit and it's just a whole bunch of decision making essentially. The distillation cuts that I am currently working on are from the distillation of the Reject Strawberry Wine. If you wanna check out that video, you can head over here. Um, but essentially what I did, just to recap, is I took two batches of Reject Strawberry Wine, distilled those, and now I have a white brandy. The first batch of Reject Strawberry Wine was four gallons at 8.4% ABV. The second batch was about four and a half gallons, but this was at 7.9% ABV. Those each got distilled separately, and then I combined the low wines and had a total of 8,360 liters of low wines. This is about 2.2 gallons, and that was sitting at 42% ABV. I then distilled those low wines and collected a bunch of jars. Um, I collected 420 mils of four shots and discarded those. Those get put in a jar that I use for cleaning. I collected four small jars of heads, two much larger jars of hearts, and four small jars of tails. The hearts got combined into this jar right here, and I have about a liter and a half. And now what I'm struggling with is figuring out how much of the heads and the tails to mix in with the hearts, if any. And this is really challenging because it is just decision making. Depending on what you're distilling, the heads, hearts, and tails are obviously going to taste different, right? The heads might be fruitier. They might be more floral. They might be more... Chemically, they might be more nail polish remover-y. Um, there might be some butterscotch in there as well. It really depends on what you've fermented. Then the hearts are going to typically taste good, right? You're going to be tasting what's coming off the still and going, ah, yes, that is good not necessarily like set in stone what the flavor profile is going to be like, but typically when you get to the hearts, you're like, yeah, that's, that's the good stuff. Now, when you get towards the end of the hearts where the tails are going to start showing up, you'll get typically grungier flavors. With whiskey, this can taste like wet dog. It can taste like pasta noodles. That's what I get more, it tastes like pasta water. Um, that's what I think low wines for, uh, for whiskeys taste like. Again, depending on what you're making, your distillation cuts will be different um, for peated whiskeys, right? They tend to keep a lot more of those grungy flavors because that's where those phenols come through. Laphroaig, for instance, takes a relatively large heads cut. I don't know what that means. Um, but they discard a lot of the heads, which has those lighter, more floral notes in whiskey. And then they keep more of the tails, which has more of that grunginess. And they're looking for those tarry notes in the tails. There are also different methods for how you take your distillation cuts. Um, I know Jesse from Still It has a full video on this, um, but you can take right? Individual jars of cuts that way, or you can do rolling cuts. That means you're making your decisions based on what's happening in real time. Obviously, I was not feeling very committal, so I took a bunch of jars of cuts, and now I have to make those decisions. So yeah, in summary, everyone has their own method for taking distillation cuts if you're a distiller and it can take years, probably longer, I don't know, to actually hone in on your distillation practices and your distillation cuts that you take. So you can do this either based on ABV, time during distillation, 
Um, some combine their heads with water to see how quickly it clarifies when you mix it together and then they determine how to take their heads cuts that way. Um, yeah, other distillers just use their sense of smell and taste, which is what I try to do. And again, that makes it hard. Every day, my senses are different. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's why I'm struggling right now. Um, and I've been working on combining these distillation cuts for about two weeks. So before I start going through all the distillation cuts that I took for this reject strawberry brandy, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and for being the start of a neat community over on Patreon. And for those of you who are watching who are not yet on Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to join us over there. I'll tell you what the hearts taste like. They are quite delicious. There's a lot of creamy vanilla citrus flavors on the nose, accompanied by some like strawberry jam, coconut oil. There's something a little bit alcoholic as well as some cinnamon, but mostly what I'm getting is a light strawberry with a lot of cinnamon, like the cinnamon pine cones and a little bit of citrus that gives it some freshness. On the palate, there's that fruitiness a little bit. Definitely that cinnamon pine cone comes forward a lot. Um, there's some dried fruits that are kind of hard to pinpoint, a little bit like dried mango or dehydrated mango and some like berry syrup. But what I'm struggling with is that I want more fruitiness in the hearts. And there's a little bit of fruitiness in the heads and a very different kind of fruitiness in the tails. So it's figuring out how to incorporate those without bringing along any of their negative qualities, right? So in the heads, there's a lot more of an alcoholic kick. This doesn't just come forward as like ethanol, right? It's a little bit uh, bug spray like, which doesn't taste great. <laughs> and the strawberry notes are pretty diluted. In the tails, there's a lot more of that fruitiness, but it's also accompanied by more of that cinnamon pine cone thing. It's pretty strong. And the fruitiness isn't necessarily all strawberries. Some of it's a little bit funky and a little bit grungy. There's a little waxiness and a little whininess, a little bit like low wines, yeah. So again, it's trying to figure out how much of the heads, how much of the tails to blend in with the hearts. And I did a number of different tinctures. Um, two weeks ago, I had created three different tinctures that I was pretty happy with, but also not happy with enough to fully commit to blending the cuts together. Um, so I saved those little tinctures and vials and have revisited them today. I thought I was feeling more decisive and then I start second guessing myself, to be honest. Like I said, the hearts are great on their own. However, I do want some more fruitiness. And I ended up narrowing it down to uh, the first tincture that I made. And that includes literally tossing in all of the heads and tails in with the hearts. So I'm kind of deciding between do I blend it all together or do I just keep the hearts? Which, yeah, I'm just taking you guys through my thought process. Now, while doing this, right, I know that if I combine all the heads and tails with the hearts, that that means I'm going to get a ton more booze than I would get if I just keep the liter and a half of hearts alone. So I already have that as like a little bias that's saying like, oh yeah, that tincture is really, really great. And removing that bias is super hard. Also, the only person I have to kind of bounce the tasting notes off of is Jerry and he's cooking breakfast in the kitchen right now. I am. So the tincture that combines all the cuts together not the four shots, right? Those got discarded. But the tincture that combines the heads and the tails with the hearts 
in the proper proportions um, does have a lot more fruitiness on the nose. And it also has some like cream cheese frosting. It's got that cinnamon pine cone thing, but it's not too upfront on the nose. It's a lot fruitier on the nose. On the palate, it's got some heat. It's sitting at 74% ABV and it's got a creamy mouthfeel. So I'm really enjoying the mouthfeel. Um, there is that fruitiness that comes forward, I think a little bit more so than just the hearts alone on the palate, um, but it does have a lot of that cinnamon spice. So I guess the question is, do I mind that cinnamon spice? Do I prefer that cinnamon spice? Um, does it come forward more on the tincture with all the cuts versus just the heart's cut itself. It's pretty close. So because I'm planning to oak infuse this and the hearts versus the tincture with all the cuts seem pretty close with just like a little bit more fruitiness, I'm leaning towards combining all of the cuts. Yeah. If you have any questions about distillation at all, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, um, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, share the video with your distiller friends. <laughs> now, while doing this, you make a lot of noise, but also not happy with enough to um, <laughs> God bless you. Grungery makes me think of like wet dog or like basement. Yeah. Yeah. But just imagine like grungy fruits. Mm -hmm. okay. So. Like fruits that are in a basement or on a wet dog. Yeah. <laughs> like a dog just rolled in fruits. A wet dog rolled in fruits. If you have any questions about why my boyfriend flushed the toilet. Well, I was waiting for this.